Hello, I am speaking with Lori today, who has an incredible story. Um, she's going to tell us a little bit about like her backstory and how she arrived to losing her colon. I know that sounds terrible, but there is a happy ending. <laughs> so over to you, Lori. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, first of all, it's wonderful to be here. And for everybody who's viewing, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate Aww. it. Um, <clears throat> I was born in a suburb of Chicago called Evanston, which happens to be the same place <laughs> as, as my host here. And um, so I lived in greater Chicago for the first two years of my life. My father was a salesman, so that was his sales ter territory at the same at the point, time I was born. So I don't really remember much about it, but <clears throat> because of his sales job, we moved it to different points around the Midwest. So I've lived in Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, as well as Illinois. And I ended up in upstate New York where my mother's family came from because after my father died, um, she wanted to move back to where her family was. And I am now living in California um, where I was offered a job. So that's what brought me out here. Okay. <clears throat> I'm a, I'm a te technical writer. Um, I most recently worked for a cybersecurity firm documenting cybersecurity products for enterprise large businesses. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the company I was working for had a, a big layoff. And mm -hmm. so I lost that job, but <clears throat> it was a very interesting job. And I'm hoping I can get another job documenting similar products because I really value that experience. So I live out here with my two cats and they're going to be 19 years old in August. So, Oh, wow. They're seeing me. So, um, as far as my eating history, um, as far back as I knew, I loved meat. So I probably have been a carnivore all my life. I just didn't know it then. Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't a name. I didn't have the name carnivore, but I loved meat. Um, and fortunately, my mother was a very good cook. <clears throat> she could cook a delicious roast, um, roasted chicken, the best turkey dinner you ever had at Thanksgiving, um, steak, you know, she could do it all. And so I love the meat. And so that was a very strong eating pattern that evolved mm -hmm. very, very quickly. Unfortunately, another eating pattern came up. I didn't like vegetables. I never did. And my mother used to worry about it. She was worried I wasn't getting enough nutrients and everything. And she thought maybe if she fed me more potatoes, I think she was under the idea that potatoes somehow had a lot of nutrients in them, which they <laughs> don't necessarily have. Yeah. And so I ate lots and lots of potatoes. And I, I think I developed a very strong liking for carbs, starting with potatoes. And then it got to bread and then it got to, unfortunately, it got into more junky food, you know, um, snacky, salty things like, you know, crackers and Doritos and Fritos and things like that. And, and then a third eating pattern emerged, which was sugar. And I started to love cake and cookies. And unfortunately, my mother was a wonderful baker too. She could bake a delicious birthday cake. She could bake brownies. And, you know, I just gobbled it all up. I loved it all. Um, despite this, um, up through adolescence, I was a very slender, healthy, energetic child. Um, I didn't have an ounce of fat on me. And I could run faster, kick harder, throw farther than any girl I knew. And oh, wow. in fact, I used to love when I got a two wheel bike for my eighth birthday, I rode that thing everywhere and I could ride very fast. And in fact, I used to ride around with the boys in the neighborhood because the girls rode too slow. <laughs> and so, um, you know, no matter how many carbs I was eating or how much sugar I was eating, um, I just burned it off because I had so much energy. Mm -hmm. But then when I hit adolescence, unfortunately, um, you know, that's when a girl's woman changes, or girl's body changes to a woman's body. And mm -hmm. 
my face started filling out, my figure started filling out, you know, I was developing and what I thought were all the wrong places and, <laughs> and like what was happening. I mm -hmm. wanted to be that skinny little kid that mm -hmm. I had always been. Right. And also this was a time when girls start to think about being pretty and right. being very feminine and thinking what boys like and, and being very conscious of their weight. And so I started hearing girls fuss about, Oh, I'm too fat. I got to go on a diet. And oh, um, wow. What year I, was that? Can I ask? Um, this was in the sixties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So this was, okay. This is all ancient history, actually. <laughs> but um, um, but it um, you know, it was a time when there was there were so many misconceptions about health and about weight and right. weight gain and weight loss, and so as I emerged into my teens. Um, and my body kept filling out. I, I just didn't like it. And I also didn't like the fact that I was slowing down physically. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I was also getting a sense that food was starting to serve not only as something I liked to eat, but as a source of comfort to me because there was a lot of stress in my family. Um, my father, before he got into sales, he had been a pilot in the United States Navy. And mm. he absolutely loved flying. And he did very well in the Navy, but um, he was grounded from flying for medical reasons. And my mother never told us what they were, but I sensed that it was high blood sugar or high blood pressure, one of those two. He never told us, but he was heartbroken about mm. not being able to fly. And okay. I think his heart was in the sky and even though he had a very successful sales career for many, many years, that's not what he wanted in life. And mm -hmm. I think I felt that tension. I felt it in the family. I felt it between my mother and father. And as the youngest of five children, none of us kids were raised to process our emotions, to talk them out, you know, to communicate. So mm -hmm. I think I was starting to eat my emotions away. Okay. And when, when I was 16, my father died of a heart attack. He had had two heart attacks mm -hmm. before that. And the doctor told him his third one was, would be his last. And indeed it was. Oh, wow. And when he died, my mother was absolutely devastated. Mm -hmm. And she could not comfort me. In fact, when the pastor of our church broke the news to me that my father had died, she could not look at me. And I didn't know what to do. I wanted to comfort. I wanted to say something to her or have her say mm -hmm. something to me. And she couldn't. So <clears throat> because my brothers were in the service, my sister was way at college. It was just my mother and me in the house alone. Oh, I wow. was, you know, in 11th grade then. Mm -hmm. And I had to kind of become the parent and she the child because she was just so heartbroken about my father. She mm -hmm. had to shut down. He had started his own business at the time and she had to shut it down and sell off his assets. And this dress must have been just horrifying for her. And she was developing a very severe alcohol problem as a result mm -hmm. of it. And I didn't know what to do with that either. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like food was the only thing that wasn't a hassle in my life at that time. It right. never lectured me. It never talked back to me. It was just there. Mm -hmm. And so that's when the weight really started coming on. Okay. Um, and by the time I was in college, I was starting to yo-yo diet, you know, um, five pounds on, five pounds off, mm -hmm. five pounds back on plus another five. And I know mm -hmm. you've heard this story many times from your other guests. But mm -hmm. in fact, I remember one of your guests telling telling you he was a professional yo-yo dieter. And, <laughs> you know, I felt yeah. sad about that. But that term professional yo-yo dieter almost, you know, kind of gave me a laugh because that's what I became. And I yo-yo dieted for years and years and years. And when I went to college, I yo-yo dieted. Um, when I started my professional career in the business world, I... I went up and down and up and down. And then there was some point where, because I did not know how to process the emotions, my self-esteem was not very high. Um, 
the yo-yo kind of stopped and I just put the weight on. Okay. And 20 pounds, 30, 40. Finally, I gained 50 pounds. Oh, wow. And then beyond that, I kept gaining more weight and I got up to 220 pounds. Oh, wow. How, how tall are you? Five foot three and a half. So we're like the same. So I understand what that would look like. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I had a big gut, mm -hmm. uh, a pot belly. You know, I had this gigantic spare tire and it was very hard to fit into decent clothes. And mm -hmm. of course, by the time I got up to 220, I was wearing plus sizes sure. and trying to cover up the big spare tire. Mm -hmm. And that didn't help my self-esteem one no. bit. Sure. And um, I started, that's when I started noticing bad digestive problems. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. In addition to my blood pressure having gone up, um, I just wasn't, I was starting to get stomach aches all the time, but I was scared to death to find out what it was. And I thought, oh, wow. well, if I could just lose weight, maybe that would make it go away. Yeah. But I couldn't seem to lose the weight. I was just eating for comfort. Mm -hmm. And this just went on and on. And um, finally, I, I, you know, was just feeling so sick and had diarrhea all the time. I did go to oh, a man. doctor and they said, well, your colon is inflamed um, and we're going to put you on this medication. And I can't remember the name of it, but whatever it was, it didn't do any good. And yeah. so I just kind of, you know, muddled through for, for years and years. And I thought maybe if I eat more fiber, that'll help. So I started trying to eat more foods with fiber and track how much fiber I was getting every day. And I thought that was helping. Um, and because I wasn't feeling quite as, as sick to my stomach, but it wasn't. And then um, I got a kidney infection. My right oh, kidney no. had, a, had a huge stone and it hurt like everything. So I had to go to the emergency room and <clears throat> they found the stone and it had become infected. So they had to drain the infection. And then um, two weeks later, I had to go back and have the stone excised. They, they do some sort of thing where they blast it into little pieces and then it passes out of your body. And oh, no. so now you would think that I would have learned a lifetime lesson from that alone. Right. Uh, and I, I did, you know, I tried, to, I lost maybe about 30 pounds because I, I didn't want to have another kidney stone. And I kept it off for maybe six months or something. And then um, the weight started to creep back on. And in the meantime, my colon was just, you know, deteriorating and how badly it was deteriorating. I had no idea. Um, until I went for another colonoscopy. And they said, your colon is just really, really a complete mess. It's totally non-functional. Oh, we no. Re we recommend that we do a complete colon removal <clears throat> because not only was my colon in, in bad shape when it gets that bad, for that many years, you know, your risk of cancer is like through the roof. Mm. And so they said, we want to do a complete, what they call proctocolectomy. And they also wanted to do a hysterectomy because- Did you yes, do that did. also? Yes, they did both operations in the same session. Oh, wow. Now, fortunately, my colorectal surgeon was a wonderful lady and she explained everything very thoroughly with great patience. So I had the surgery and I now wear a, what they call an ileostomy bag. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <clears throat> it sounds horrible, but it, does. <laughs> it, it, it really, it probably saved my life for one thing. Okay. And it also um, presented me with a challenge. Where do I go with my eating now? I mean, right. this has been a huge trauma to my mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. And how do I get my health back and keep it this time? Right. 
I don't want to be fat again. I don't mm -hmm. want to go through this again, you know. And so I, I didn't know what to do. I thought, well, maybe if I just, you know, I had been so used to carbs and sugar my whole life. And I thought maybe if I could just cut out the, the snack foods, um, mm -hmm. maybe I could start there. So I, I did do that. I, I got rid of the Fritos and potato chips and stuff like that, but I was still eating a lot of potatoes and bread mm -hmm. and things like that. And as far as the sugar, I thought, well, maybe just get rid of the candy bars, you know, the three musketeers and the, all the other candy bars and everything else. <laughs> yes. um, so, but I was still eating sugar and, oh, okay. and then I saw a video on YouTube by Dr. Robert Lustig and he had been working in, out of San Francisco. He, he, his practice had involved mostly adolescents and, um, you know, children. And he talked about these kids as young as age 10 coming into his office with fatty liver and type two diabetes at That's that crazy. young at eight. Yeah, and it, it, it really kind of scared him to death. And he said, you know, sugar is just extremely destructive. So he had, you know, instructed these kids to get the sugar out of their body. That was the most important thing. Yeah. And I think that kind of helped me, you know, think long and hard about the sugar. And right. so, but it was still very difficult because I, I just was so used to it. It was such a big part of my life. And then another video came on to my feed from Dr. Barry. Lovely. And <laughs> this was a big game changer for me. Mm -hmm. he talked about what he called the proper human diet. And I had never heard that term before. And he talked about the central focus of the proper human diet was meat, not just any meat, red meat. And I just looked dumbfounded at the screen and I, and he talked about, it was very nutrient dense. You know, it was ancestrally appropriate. It was what our bodies were really built to eat. And I'm looking at the screen and thinking, did I just hear what I just heard? He's saying that red meat is one of the best things you could eat. And I had to watch that video a couple of times. And it's like, it was almost as if a ball and chain had been pulled from my ankle because finally I could hold on to my love of meat. I could go back to it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to lie to myself anymore. I didn't have to listen to the anti-meat, you know, meatless Mondays, you know, vegan Fridays or whatever else they wanted to come up with, you know, um, butter is bad for you, saturated fat, and right. um, margarine <laughs> is better for you. Uh, margarine is not only not better for you, it tastes terrible. And it does. It, yeah. So um, Dr. Barry was the one that finally helped me take my Miss Carbohydrate America crown off and throw <laughs> it away. I have never heard of that, but that's amazing. <laughs> and um, that, that was two years ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So when did you, I'm just curious, what, what age did you have that operation? I was um, in my late 60s. Oh, yeah. okay. But so you were in, you had like stomach pain for years, basically. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. And so, yeah. yeah. So when you started the proper human diet two years ago and you could eat your meat as much as you wanted, which is amazing. <laughs> um, what was your weight then? How much weight did you lose? And can you tell me about, uh, is it a colostomy bag? You said the name for it. I'm so sorry. Um, Oh, that's all right. Ileostomy bag. Ileostomy bag. Okay. So if yes, you can tell me yes. about your weight loss, your ileostomy bag, like the differences you noted while going on the diet and also your blood pressure, because you mentioned that. Oh, sure. Um, 
Well, I had lost some weight um, after my first kidney infection. And then nine mm. years later, I had a second one. And mm. that infection got into my bloodstream. And that put me in the intensive care unit for two weeks. Okay. And so I lost about 40 pounds right there because mm. of that. Now, I did gain some of it back, but I never got back up to 220. Okay. And then, so by the time, and then I just wasn't feeling well because my colon was so messed up. So when I went in to have the, the colon surgery, I think I weighed about 137 pounds. Oh, okay. So you'd lost yeah. quite a bit of weight before due to the infections and just being ill. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just not the healthiest being... way. But I but know. You lost yeah. The weight. Okay. Yeah. Un yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, my colorectal surgeon, um, as I said, she was really great. She she did a good job on the operation. The nurses spoke very, very highly of her. And so I talked about, I asked her after my first post-surgery visit, I said, um, now what dietary restrictions do I have now that I'm in this bag? And she said, well, there really aren't many. What you have to do is take smaller bites, you know, eat a little slower. And um, I said, should I avoid meat? And she goes, oh, no. She goes, you know, there's there's no problem with that. She said, if you have, if you want a steak, go for it. Oh, yay. Well, that's good. I'm glad about that. Yeah. That's good news. <laughs> yeah. And so um, now with the, with the ileostomy bag, as I mentioned, I do have to, you know, cut my food into smaller pieces and <laughs> eat, eat a little slower. But I have no problem with meat. I've eaten steak. I've eaten ground beef. I've, you know, eaten bacon, you know, all of that. Never a problem ever. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, so you haven't eaten any vegetables since that. So I was just curious if you've nope. seen any foreign objects undigested showing up in there. I know that's gross, but I'm just curious. <laughs> well, um, actually, before the surgery, I used to see pieces of undigested food. Okay. But um, actually, now that's pretty rare. Um, okay. So I, you know, it, it, it looks like, you know, my small intestine has to do more of the work now on, cause they're mm. no more large intestine to, right. you know, filter anything out. But, um, no, I am not, I'm not having any problems. The only thing I have to be very, very careful of is that I have to make sure that none of the food that I eat is, you know, rancid or too old. I have to check the, you know, use by dates mm. and things like that, or I will okay. get, uh, I'll, I'll get nausea, you know, and I won't okay. feel well. So, okay. but other than that, um, no, there is no problem eating meat uh, with this, with this surgery. Oh, okay. Great. That's good to know for anyone else who yeah. has a similar situation. Uh, what benefits have you noticed by eating a proper human diet? From well, how you're eating <laughs> Um, I did lose some more weight. So I, now I weigh about 99 pounds. Oh, wow. That's, that's, <laughs> is that, is that like healthy? Is your, is that a healthy weight for, for you? Yeah. I, I, it's not a problem for me. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> How about your doctors? <laughs> um, well, the last time I weighed in at my doctor, which was about a month ago, she didn't have any she didn't say anything about it. So, oh, okay. Um, there you go. Yeah. And actually, I have not told my doctor I'm a carnivore. So, you know, oh. that, that never came up. <laughs> but my blood work was was satisfactory. So, oh, um, great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, blood sugar normal, blood pressure normal. Great. Um, so, that's those are the two big numbers that I, you know, I feel concerned about. So, and, and they're, they're all right right now. So I just have to be careful. And the other thing that I have to manage, do a better job of managing, which I'm still learning about, is stress. Because mm -hmm. um, stress will make me physically ill, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, sure. so uh, that's what I have to manage. And, you know, having lost my job, that's a, that's a tough one to deal with right now. So, sure. you know, I'm just trying to... But I haven't strayed away from carnivore. I haven't oh, fallen off the wagon. 
Yeah. There have been times when it was came pretty close, but uh, I haven't <laughs> failed. I haven't fallen off yet. <laughs> oh, wow. So for two years, you have not fallen off one time. You just stuck to the plan. Um, I stuck to the plan, but I have made a few mistakes. Um, oh, okay. Number one is I, I got in. I got on a kick of drinking a lot of diet soda at one point. Oh, okay. Because, you know, I thought, well, zero sugar, you know, that's not going to hurt me. It's not going to raise my blood sugar. But, you know, it's sweet. And mm -hmm. um, what I've learned about that is that the body isn't very good at distinguishing um, sweet from sugar. So sure. when a sweet, when sweet touches your tongue and your in your taste buds a message goes to the brain sugar and that sends a message to the pancreas sugar even mm -hmm. though it doesn't have any calories so um right i actually start i gained a few pounds during that mm -hmm. soda eating yeah it was weird so i thought i gotta ditch this it's got a ton of artificial chemicals in it mm -hmm. anyway so sure i ditched i ditched the um diet soda the other thing that i did that I found it wasn't working out too well was um, drinking too much cream with my tea mm. and the cream, even though I, I bought heavy whipping cream that didn't have any real nasty ingredients in it, it just somehow didn't agree with me and was making me sick. So okay. I ditched that. So now I'm, I'm back to beef, bacon, butter and eggs and I do eat chicken. You know, okay. I eat like roasted chicken and I do eat the skin. I cook it separately so I crisp it up. Mm. But, um, and love I'll that. eat, oh, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I eat salmon occasionally. I, oh, I love yeah. the wild caught salmon, not the farm mm. stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I'm mostly B, 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 and E with a few supplementary meats here and there. Okay. That's fine. Do you, what do, we, what do you think of cheese? Do you do cheese or no? No cheese. Okay. <laughs> I just uh, did a video. I'm about to do a video about a chaffle, but you can do it with chicken and eggs in the waffle maker. You don't have to add oh. cheese <laughs> if you want to try that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, it's not that I, you know, think cheese is necessarily bad, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm trying to minimize dairy consumption as much as I can. I eat, I eat a ton of butter and okay. that's, you know, dairy essentially. But um, now the one thing that I saw that was kind of intriguing was a guy made this, this kind of carnivorous pizza mm -hmm. and he used Parmesan cheese and crisped it up, crisped it up to make the, the crust. Mm. And then he put ground beef as the major ingredients, put some pepperoni he tried to get some natural unprocessed you know pepperoni on it and put the pepperoni on and he did sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top and it actually looked pretty good so i might try something like that because i don't consider cheese falling off the wagon or cheating or anything like that it's oh just i don't a, consider that either i just have no I get, i'll have some problems depending on the cheese cream cheese my nose will run uh i know i noted that today Harder cheeses, I'm okay, but I have to do it in moderation <laughs> for me. Oh, did I lose you, Lori? I think I lost her. Oh, no. I lost Lori. You were playing now, right? No. No, we're recording. we're recording. I hope she comes back. Um, Are you back? Are you back? Hello, Lori. Um, she's literally like the cutest person I've ever interviewed, and she's so good at telling stories. Okay. Yeah, it's like very, I'm like, that's why you don't hear me talking much. Is she's a great storyteller. Yeah. Oh, she's gone. Let's see if she comes back. I'm not gonna end the recording. I'm just gonna let her back in. <laughs> Or is it my internet? No. Oh, 
con la hermanita, no me di cuenta si llegaron o no, y cómo les fue. I lost you for a second. <laughs> what was going on because my internet connection was, was still there, so I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. My internet was fine also. Not sure. There you go. It's a glitch of the, the internet, a glitch of the matrix. <laughs> we're okay. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. What were we talking about? Um, oh, we're talking about like different. Um, well, you would ask me what. Um, Oh, how you're eating and about yeah, your thoughts yeah. about cheese and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> I think we're basically done with that subject. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, do you have any other successes or anything else that you noticed from eating this way? Well, I do feel like I have more mental clarity and I feel like I can analyze problems more effectively. Um, I can speak with a little more clarity. Um, now, there is a little bit, I don't know whether I would call it a downside, but um, because of the greater mental clarity, I have looked back on some of my emotional history as I was growing up, and I recalled a lot of things that became clear to me that were not clear to me at the time mm -hmm. that they happened. And that I realized that I did not grieve properly for many things, um, mm -hmm. including the deaths of both of my parents. My mother died when I was 18. And oh, wow. um, my brother, um, my brother Jeff, um, died when I was 23. He um, took his own life. He had become addicted to alcohol and he just lost all hope. And mm -hmm. I never grieved that properly. I, I, I remember feeling extremely sad at his death, but mm -hmm. I didn't know how to process the emotions. I was afraid to cry. And oh, wow. so that sort of, I had to go back and kind of relive some of that stuff mentally. And mm -hmm. that was very, very painful, but it was a necessary pain because I had to process that even at a late age, I mm -hmm. still had to do that. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm grateful for that mental clarity, even though it did bring sadness and tears. I so, understand. and, and of course, like not carrying all that extra weight around, you know, that's certainly, you know, you mean physically, physical or mental weight, <laughs> physical actually, weight or mental weight? Actually both really. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, because I can recognize, um, things like anger, feeling stress, I can recognize those a lot more readily than I could before carnivore. And I could put words to it. I can say, I'm just feeling really stressed right now. Mm -hmm. Or this makes me angry. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't verbalize that to myself before. Mm -hmm. And when I feel so stressed that I want to go back to the dark and go to have a candy bar or mm -hmm. a piece mm -hmm. of cake or something, I can recognize that now and just say, I want that cake. Why do I want that cake? What's bothering me? Mm -hmm. Because it's not the cake I want. It's the comfort that used to come with cake. But right. That would only make a, now I can say to myself, that would only make a bad situation worse. Mm -hmm. You know, that's poison to me now. Mm -hmm. And do I want to poison myself? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> Totally. I understand. Um, yeah. I was, while we were uh, on break for a second, I was telling yeah. my husband that you're very eloquent, by the way, and you're a fantastic storyteller. Oh, <laughs> and, like, thank you. Your story is so interesting. Um, so it's interesting that you say that you can, you speak better now. <laughs> I don't oh. know you before, but you're very, you're very good at speaking. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Um, if someone is in your position or they're having, I'm so sorry, give me the name of the disease again, uh, col, uh, ulcerative oh, colitis or absolutely. IBS or things like this, what would yeah. you recommend for them? Well, um, I would, I would tell them to 
just look at everything in their life because most of the when I first heard that term, you know, I was told that there was no known cause because I did ask, would my diet have any influence on this? Mm. No, it has nothing to do with diet. What about wow. stress? No, it, it stress isn't a factor. Um, you know, they, they really didn't know. Mm -hmm. And that's probably still what people are being told. Um, so I would look in, I would recommend that they look into, you know, what, is there any food that you started consuming that, that made a difference in how you felt? Um, is there any, are there any stressors in your life that you think are being felt in your digestive system? Um, and I would, I would recommend that they, they really look seriously at that. And I would recommend that they talk to people because there are many carnivores who have had some version of a digestive disorder, whether it's diverticulitis mm -hmm. or IBS or ulcerative colitis or any of those. And many of those people have reversed that condition. They don't feel that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm not sure if knowing about the proper human diet well before I was diagnosed would have made a difference, but my sense is that it could have. I'm not ruling out that possibility. Mm -hmm. um, although I don't, you know, even though this was a very radical solution to my digestive problem, I, you know, the, the, the bag is something, it was an adjustment, but I'm used to it now. Mm -hmm. And I can still live a normal life. Nobody can see the bag from okay. behind my trousers. Um, mm -hmm. And I can still tuck my, my shirt in. Oh, okay. You still can't see the bag. And no one at work has ever noticed or asked me anything about it. A lot of people don't even know I'm wearing one. So, um, you know, for that, I'm very grateful for, you know, sure. because it did prevent me from, you know, functioning. I could go back to work full time. You know, I could travel. I could do just about anything. I just have to carry my ostomy supplies with me wherever I go if I travel. Sure. Um, so it's, I wouldn't want people to have to have their colon cut out. Right. Um, but if it's inevitable that they have to do that, I would try to reassure them that you can still live a happy, normal life. Okay. You know? yeah. yeah. I mean, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. Because yeah. you, you, you think about it and you, it seems like you can't. But I don't know. Like, that's what I would think, that you can't live a normal life like that. Yeah. Well, for some people, maybe there's, you know, there are, <clears throat> complicating factors that make it more difficult for them to live a normal life. For mm -hmm. me, they just were able to do a clean extraction of the colon okay. and rectum. And um, the hysterectomy did not affect me either because I was past childbearing age when that mm. hysterectomy was done. Okay. So it didn't really make any difference, but I did tell friends after the surgery, I said, I kind of feel like a hollowed out Halloween pumpkin because it just <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I understand. Have you ever talked to, there's this lovely gentleman in the UK. His name is Lee. Uh, yes. He's handle on YouTube. Okay. Kent Carnivore. He, cause he lost, he has a very similar situation. Yes, he does. And I have watched, he has done some outstanding videos. Absolutely. And and he, um, now his, his colon surgery was a little different from mine because they did not, they extracted his colon, but I believe they did, they left a small part of it in his rectum or something like that. So he mm -hmm. had to go back just recently for a second oh. surgery to yeah, remove the rest of it. So I don't know why they did that. They must have had a reason for it. I had sure. it all done at the same time. So I feel very fortunate in that respect. Sure. But he, he said that he has said many times, in fact, that if he had known about carnivore years and years and years and years ago, he, he may have been able to prevent having right. that surgery. So yeah, exactly. 
yeah. it's interesting because I I want to do a video where I'm talking to my 14 year old self. Not that I had oh. that, but because I started having very bad menstrual cycle um, issues very early and they oh, okay. progressively got worse until I had kids. It changes a bit, but it was never good. It was never like, hey, this is really what your menstrual cycle is supposed to feel like until I started carnivore. And I really wish I would have known that when I was 14. Similar, oh, not that no. I had any body parts removed, but excruciating pain too many times to talk about. Debilitating pain oh, with headaches, backaches, yeah. like just terrible. So it's funny, like similarly, I wish I knew about that. Even though like sometimes I couldn't, Eat. I just felt very bad. But when I could eat, what I wanted to eat was red meat. It was almost like my body was already telling me, but in the form of uh -huh. like tacos or hamburgers, but I had to have that red meat when I craved it. And like, if you ask my husband right now, before I started this every month, I'm like, let's go get some hamburgers. I need some hamburgers right now. Let's go get some cheeseburgers. Of course, it all be other junk on it, but it was really that initial thing that I was craving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, when you're a carnivore, I think that I, I don't know many carnivores that did not have, that weren't really carnivores in spirit <laughs> all their lives. Yeah, because I don't know, I don't know anybody who was like, never ate meat. They were, I mean, I know some carnivores went through a period of vegetarianism or veganism sure. for years and right. years. But my guess, and this is just a guess, but um, I would guess that most carnivores were really in some deep down part of them were carnivores since they were born. <laughs> sure. I've always loved a good steak. I've always loved that. I've always loved. Oh good meat. yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially carne asada tacos, especially cheeseburgers. Uh, I, when I was pregnant with my first child, I don't know how many cheeseburgers I ate. That's, <laughs> I mean, and a ton of garbage also, but I always wanted the, the cheeseburgers <laughs> yeah you wanted the meat and yeah and that's the way i was too i um, now before i i really um, adopted the human proper human diet i was eating lots and lots of burgers but i was eating them with the, with they were loaded well i would put ketchup and cheese and actually it was just ketchup and cheese but i would always have the fries on the side right and a great big a great big soda. Mm -hmm. And so the meat didn't get a chance to, to shine. You know, it was, no. it was like, you know, <laughs> being pushed aside by the, the French fries and the soda and everything else. And so and the seed oils. <laughs> yeah. The stern seed oils. Yeah. yeah. And so um, now when I have a burger, it's vastly different because I just, I just get beef patties. Like if I go to McDonald's, I just get the beef patties plain and dry. And they're always happy to do that for me. But the first few times I did it, they, don't you want any cheese? No, thank yeah. you. You just want it plain and dry, plain and dry. And <laughs> they give it to me that way, but they, they probably think, who is this weirdo? <laughs> <laughs> probably. And that's what's really funny. Like, you're not questioned when you go to McDonald's and you order the, uh, they don't do that. I don't think they do the super size thing anymore since that documentary came out. Super oh, size me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. If you don't get the drink and the fries, there's something off. Uh, funny story about McDonald's. I, my, we, I don't live in the U S. Um, but I am a U.S. citizen. I'm like, we were born in Evanston at St. Francis hospital. Wow. I took my kids home last year. And my son's like, can I please have a Happy Meal? I've never had a Happy Meal. Can we please go to McDonald's? I've never been to McDonald's. He had been to McDonald's. He just didn't remember um, once or twice as a small child here. So we went to McDonald's. And then we went to McDonald's. Then we ate more junk food. Like yeah. I've definitely like broken my way of eating. I just always go back to it. But when I was visiting family, it was just very bad. Uh, my very skinny son became very chubby very fast <laughs> from McDonald's. Wow. Oh, we were only darn. home for like a couple, like three, four weeks. And uh, I was shocked at how wow. fast he had just like in a little belly. I'll send you, I'll email you a photo so you can see what he looks oh like. And gosh. then just imagine that chubby in three weeks. Um, 
Yeah, it was wow. crazy because my kids are not like carnivore. They do eat meat, they eat eggs, um, they like beef, but uh, like my son loves rice. I don't cook it. He just goes to his aunt's house or his grandma's house and eats rice and eats carbohydrates. He's super skinny he and healthy. So it's crazy oh, for me darn. eating McDonald's and eating junk food in the U S those carbohydrates, how fast and how rapidly he changed his appearance, how, how his appearance totally changed. Oh, wow. That quickly. That's very amazing. quickly, very quickly. Oh. I, I'll have to, I, I don't show my kids so much on YouTube or Facebook, but I will send you photos because you'll be yeah, shocked. Please. <laughs> yeah, please do. Because that that's amazing that he could In three weeks. In three weeks, he looked you know. like a different kid. <gasps> wow. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's well, that, that'll do it because, you know, the more junk food I consume, the faster the weight came on, you know. Right. So, sure. But, but you know, if, <clears throat> For a kid that young with all that energy, that's still yeah. pretty amazing that that it, happened. That must was, have been really scary for you to see that. Um, it was more, I, I think it, I might have been scared if we would have stayed longer and I would have seen it get worse, but I knew I was coming home soon. Oh, okay. Lived, and I knew that he was just going to go back to eating normally and he he's healthy, so I knew it would just come off. The other, oh, okay. From where we live, he's outside most of the day, but when we went home, it was oh, November. Good. You couldn't go outside. You're not allowed to go outside unless you were, and I was working. Anyways, it was just like a total, complete change of environment, complete change of food. And oh, uh, wow. it just was, but I was still so shocked, like how fast that changed. I brought this up with Sean yeah. Baker also. Like people eat a lot of carbohydrates here and it's not the same as in the U.S. It's just a totally different thing. Or I'll be more specific, Illinois and the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, thanks for letting me share that. This is your interview. Oh sure. <laughs> oh no problem. No, that that's really quite an interesting perspective because yeah. it just goes to show. And I don't know why in the U.S. that that would have happened to him, but it, it must be something about the composition of the food, um, mm -hmm. you know. Because um, here in the U.S. we have the deadly trio: we have the carbs, the sugar, and the seed oils. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they are found in one meal. Right. And, and that deadly trio will do you in. It'll sure. put the weight on. It will, you know, make you sick. Um, now, how was your boy feeling when he was putting on all this weight and puffing out like that? Good question. Very good question. So we went to, uh, there's a place in Rockford, Illinois. Uh, it's called Golden Chopsticks. And by the way, mm -hmm. I tested it again with my uncle when I visited again without my kids. And you can totally do carnivore. I mean, there's a little bit of seed oils when they grill the meat, but you can get just grilled meat and oh, oysters oh, and fish at a all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet. So when I went with my son in November, he ate just crap. <laughs> he was eating. Oh, he, wow. It was like a plate of rice with a pizza and French fries. <laughs> and I was actually experimenting. Oh, and then dessert afterwards. So I was experimenting. I wanted to see what would happen actually. I'm like, you can do whatever you want. I don't care. We're going home in two weeks. Like do whatever you want. Um, mm -hmm. That night he's like, oh, my stomach. I feel so bad, but it tastes so good. Why does it like he understands like how it could taste so good, but how he could feel so bad. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So he did have some upset yeah. stomach. Things. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Not totally surprised, but yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. So he's, he's back to normal weight now. Oh, totally. Speaking. Totally. Even like, I look at my kids sometimes I'm like, how do I put a little bit of weight on them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. <laughs> <coughs> like my, they're very muscular. They're very active. They're outside. Um, they play a lot. Um, but they, but the point that I want to make here is that they do eat carbohydrates, but it's not a lot of fast food. It's hardly okay. once a week. If we go, wow, well, they get to eat what they want, like at a fast food place or an ice cream or something like this. But in the U S we also have that culture of fast food. Maybe we go to fast food like every day, three times a day, twice a day, like people get into those situations. And if you don't know about carnivore and you don't know, you can go to Wendy's and just order a dry ch uh, burger patty. You know, I think that has a lot to do with it. And everything is boxed and everything is marketed. Just buy the meat. Just buy the meat. Just buy the eggs. That's what yeah. I say now. These yeah. Days. Yeah. 
absolutely. In yeah. fact, grocery shopping is so much easier. Here's another benefit of carnivore. Oh, yeah. Grocery shopping is much easier now because all I do is walk into the store, go right to the back where the oh, meat okay. and the eggs are. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, just throw some stuff on the cart and go back to the front, pay for it, and I'm out of there. Sure. Yeah, exactly. I was even thinking of doing a video about Costco. Like you could do carnivore for like a hundred bucks a week, or let's say you're totally I broke. And I wouldn't recommend this at all. Uh, just eating chicken, go to Costco, buy five chickens or six chickens. Cause they're only five bucks each pre-cooked. Toss a couple in your freezer, toss a couple in your fridge. You got food all week. Like if you were in dire straits, you could totally do that. Probably not the funnest way to do carnivore, but there you go. <laughs> they sell oh, yeah. whole to chickens totally cooked for five bucks. There's just oh, ways yeah. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I have done that because I, I have to really watch my food budget now because okay. you know, oh. I don't have my job income anymore. But um, yes, I have bought rotisserie chickens and, you know, they, they're, they're roasted. And so what I do is I, you know, I cut them up and you know, I'll eat some breast and leg and, and so I can make them last, you know, and they're, oh, nice. they're pretty tasty. But, you know, I always get a yearning for beef. I can't eat chicken all sure. the time. You yeah, know? I understand. Uh, yeah. Definitely do a Costco run. It's very cheap. I think I did. You can do it in like 120 bucks. You can get a bunch of beef. You can get eggs. You can get butter. Oh, yeah. And I think that would probably last you even longer if you like put the stuff in the freezer and <laughs> who knows, try it out, try it out and then do a video of how cheap you were able to do your carnivore diet. <laughs> oh, there's an idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I, well, I let, uh, dummy me, I, I let my Costco membership expire. So I got to, I got to go back and renew it, you know, there you go. <laughs> but um, yeah, Costco, I've heard great things about people who really, <clears throat> they get a ton of good meats. Yeah. Um, it's at true. Costco and, and you know they really you know get a lot of value for the money that way yeah exactly I love the ground beef at Costco I love the yeah. ground beef it's uh you get a it's and it's delicious <laughs> oh good good yeah. to know has um I guess a last question and then you can say any final final words has anyone given you that you personally know I'm not talking about trolls on the internet uh, or finding people on the internet, but it personally in your life, has anyone been concerned about how you're eating? Um, no, as a matter of fact, um, well, I don't have any family in the area and okay. I live alone, so I really can eat. There's no one around to watch what I eat or comment about what I eat. I don't have a roommate or anything. And in some ways that, that has helped me a great deal because I tend to be very, easily influenced by other people's comments and judgments now yeah. um so no one has said um you know you're so thin now are you eating enough or anything like mm -hmm. that and mm -hmm. fortunately you know while i was still working when we had lunches or whatever i would just grab some a sandwich and you know just toss the bread aside and just eat the meat and um no one has, you know, questioned me or hassled me or anything else. And one time we had these great big deli sandwiches. So mm. um, I grabbed a big deli sandwich and all I did was I just got rid of the bread, pulled it off the meat, wrapped it up, took it home and got a couple of meals out of it. So, oh, nice. um, yeah, so no one has commented. No, you know, I have some friends who are vegans and mm. I don't talk about food or diet or anything with them. And, you know, I, veganism would never work for me in a million years. You know, I try to be respectful of the way that other people eat, but I will never, ever be a vegan ever in my <laughs> life. Yeah. It just wouldn't work for me. No, I understand. Yeah. I understand. So um, before we end here, we got a couple more minutes left. Is there anything, any final words you would like to say? Well, I would just like to say that <clears throat> I really and truly believe that the proper human diet has been such a positive influence in my life. And if you're considering going carnivore, there are tons and tons of resources available. You can do lots of research. You can go on YouTube and, and hear 
inspiring testimonials from people who have whose lives have been turned around literally from this diet. Um, and no one is going to judge you if you're afraid to start or if you your feelings of doubt or anything. Just take your time. You know, if you want to start carnivore, start it when you're ready. And if you need to do a step down process, if you need to kind of go low carb, I mean, I didn't just jump from high carb, high sugar directly into carnivore. I had to do a little bit of a step down and that's okay. Um, but it, it just can make an incredible difference. And I wouldn't believe all of the, <clears throat> no, I try to respect people who do eat the vegan way of life, even though it's not definitely not for me, mm -hmm. but I would recommend that people do not be influenced by some of the moral talk that sometimes vegans will <laughs> give you about, you know, murdering animals and things like that, because right. there's, you know, the facts really are that, <clears throat> you know, eating meat is not harming the earth and that the fake lab grown meat that is being pushed on a lot of people right now is yeah. not good. Stay away from that. Do not okay. eat that meat. Um, the real thing is much better for you. It is not nearly as bad for the earth. In fact, you know, cows do us a favor by, you know, they help replenish the soil. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're not despoiling the earth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just remember not to be taken in by all of that. And if you start the carnivore diet, there are many, many people who will be there to share their insp inspiring stories, share their failures, share their mistakes, and how you can prevent making some of those mistakes yourself. So for me, it has been one of the best decisions I have ever made. Lovely. Oh, wow. Thank you. That's perfect. Uh, Thank you so much for that. And uh, that is a great way to uh, end this little discussion here. Lori, thank you so much. This is truly so much fun. <laughs> oh, it's, it's been wonderful for me. I'm glad we were finally able to, to sync up and do this. Oh, and yeah. I really appreciate your taking the time. And anybody who's watching, thank you so much for watching. I, I really appreciate your taking the time to be with us tonight. Yeah. So, um, oh, so I will say one more thing. Please subscribe to the lovely Lori at Carnivore Cheer. Oh, yes. I, I would love to have you as a subscriber. I welcome all new subscribers. And I promise you, my channel is a safe place. You know, <clears throat> you're not going to get lectured at. You're not. I'm not the carnivore police. I'm not a carnivore perfectionist or a carnivore purist. You know, come on in. The water's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm pretty relaxed. I've got to, I, I don't want to change my title of Alia. <laughs> I don't want to back myself into a corner, but I'm pretty relaxed on the whole subject. The whole thing is that, and now I'm talking again, we got to stay away from the ultra processed foods. We got to stay away yes. from these ultra refined foods and we got to go back to what's natural that mother nature yes. gave us. There you go. And Absolutely. You'll be a lot healthier. And you'll exactly. be pleasantly surprised as well. Mother you nature. Will knows what she's doing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, Lori. Uh, thank you so much. Once again, I'm going to, uh, Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm going to hit the end. Andrew.